There's a whiteness in God's mercy, like the whiteness of the sea. There's a kindness in God's justice, which is more than liberty. There is plentiful redemption in the blood that has been shed. There is joy for all the members in the sorrows of the head. For the love of God is broader than the measures of the mind, and the heart of the eternal is most wonderfully kind. If our love were but more faithful, we should rest upon God's word, and our lives would be thanksgiving for the goodness of our Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord be with you. My dear friends, we gather here today on this Saturday, which is also the feast day of St. Bonaventure, who was a bishop and a doctor in the church. As we gather here on this Saturday, praying for our souls and for those of our loved ones, let us seek God's forgiveness and mercy, for there is such a wideness in his love for us. And let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that just as we celebrate the heavenly birthday of the Bishop St. Bonaventure, we may benefit from his great learning and constantly imitate the ardor of his charity. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. Jacob gave his sons this charge. Since I am about to be taken to my people, bury me with my fathers in the cave that lies in the field of Ephraim the Hittite, the cave in the field of Manahapat, facing on Mamre in the land of Canaan, in the field that Abraham brought from Ephraim the Hittite for burial ground. There Abraham and his wife Sarah are buried, and so are Isaac and his wife Rebekah. There too I buried Leah, the field and the cave in it that had been purchased from the Hittites. Now that their father was dead, Joseph's brother became fearful and thought, Suppose Joseph has been nursing a grudge against us and plans to pay us back in full for the wrong we did him. So they approached Joseph and said, Before your father died, he gave us these instructions. You say to Joseph, Jacob begs you, to forgive the criminal wrongdoings of your brothers who treated you so cruelly. Please, therefore, forgive the crimes that we, the servants of your father's God, committed. When they spoke these words to him, Joseph broke into tears. Then his brother proceeded to fling themselves down before him and say, Let us be your slaves. But Joseph replied to them, Have no fear. Can I take the place of God? Even though you meant to harm me, God meant it for good, to achieve his present end, the survival of many people. Therefore have no fear. I will provide for you and your children. By thus speaking kindly to them, he reassured them. Joseph remained in Egypt together with his fa father's family. He lived a hundred and ten years. He saw Ephraim's children to the third generation. The children of Manasseh's son, Micar, were also born on Joseph's knees. Joseph said to his brothers, I am about to die. God will surely take care of you and lead you out of this land to the land that he promised on oath to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Then, putting the sons of Israel under the oath, he continued, When God thus takes care of you, you must bring my bones up with you from this place. Joseph died at the age of 110. The word of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. Be glad, you lowly ones, may your hearts be glad. Be glad, you lowly ones, may your hearts be glad. Give thanks to the Lord, invoke his name, make known among the nations his deeds. Sing to him, sing his praise, proclaim his wondrous deeds. Be glad, you lowly ones, may your hearts be glad. Glorify in his name, holy name. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Look to the Lord in his strength. Seek to serve him constantly. Be glad, you lowly ones, may your hearts be glad. Your descendants of Abraham, his servants, son of Jacob, his chosen ones. He, the Lord, is our God. Throughout the earth his judgments prevail. Be glad, you lowly ones, may your hearts be glad. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. If you are insulted for the name of Christ, blessed are you, for the Spirit of God rests upon you. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his apostles, No disciple is above his teacher, no slave above his master. Is it enough for the disciple that he become like his teacher, for the slave that he has become like his master? If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more those of his household? Therefore do not be afraid of them. Nothing is concealed that will not be revealed, nor secret that will not be known. What I say to you in the darkness, speak in the light. What you hear whispered, proclaim on the housetops. And do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both body and soul in Gehenna. Are not two sparrows sold for a small coin? Yet not one of them falls to the ground without your father's knowledge. Even the hairs of your head are counted. So do not be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Everyone who acknowledges me before others, I will acknowledge before my heavenly Father. But whoever denies me before others, I will deny before my Heavenly Father. My brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the Gospel today, Jesus really shows us how much our Heavenly Father loves us. He reminds us that nothing of the Father. Nothing in this world happens without the Father noticing. He notices when a sparrow falls from the ground. And so God knows and notices everything about us. Now, of course, we live in this world where there are cameras everywhere. In fact, there are cameras here in this chapel. But you know, the cameras that are going on what God notices, he's not trying to catch someone doing something wrong. He is noticing his creation. God loves his creation, and he reminds us how much more important we are than sparrows. That even the hairs on our heads have been counted. It's getting easier for me each and every day. But what a beautiful thought that is, that God notices us, God counts the hairs on our head, that God knows everything about us. So he knows our troubles, our worries, our anxieties, our faults, our sins. Why do we want to hide from him? Why are we so afraid of God that he's coming to get us? because we have sinned. And yet, what did he do? He sent us his Son for the forgiveness of sins. That's why Jesus came. Jesus came to give us life, to give us hope again. Jesus reminds us, though, that we must acknowledge him. 
Because if we are afraid to acknowledge Jesus here on earth, he will be ashamed of us in front of the Heavenly Father. So let's not be afraid to say we are Jesus's. Let's not to be afraid to say we are Christians. Yes, we may be ridiculed, but we should be afraid of those, shouldn't be afraid of those who can just kill the body. We should be afraid of those who can kill both soul and body. Today we celebrate the feast of St. Bonaventure, who was a bishop and a doctor of the church. He was part of the Franciscans, joined the Order of Friars Minor. Minor. He was elected the Minister General of the Order, and according to tradition, he governed with prudence, and he governed wisely. Eventually, he was made the Cardinal Archbishop of Albano, and he wrote extensively many theological books and writings that are still used in the seminaries today. And that's why we call him a doctor of the church. So today, realizing how much God loves us, realizing that God fills us with his wisdom as he did with St. Bonaventure, let us ask the Lord of life to help us on our journey as we strive to become ever closer to him. We now place our needs before the one who loves us. We pray for the church throughout the world that she may preach the gospel with courage, with strength, with conviction. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our world leaders, that they will work together for the common good, that they will find peaceful solutions to all of our world's problems. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for our nation, that we have a greater respect for all human life from the moment of conception until natural death. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for those who are sick and suffering, for those who suffer from any type of illness, from mental illness or from addictions. For their healing and peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for those who have died, for those who mourn for them, for the souls in purgatory, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for your needs and your intentions that we bring to our Heavenly Father in the very silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We now unite all of these prayers into one. We lift them up to our Heavenly Father, and we pray as Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Loving God, we ask you to hear these prayers. We ask you to grant them if they are your holy will. For they are made in the name of Jesus, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you have already come. I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go. Announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Troubled souls, why will you scatter like a crowd of frightened sheep? Foolish hearts, why will you wander from a love so true and deep? There is welcome for the sinner and more graces for the good. There is mercy with the Savior, 
There is healing in his blood.